Procast is back, baby. As a producer in the game industry, I'd like to ask you, how do you think this will change gaming as a whole? Less than we think, I believe. Um, automation and there's so much here to cover because there's automation and artificial intelligence to talk about. These are kind of same and different topics at the same time. Uh, artificial intelligence to start with is not intelligence, you know. No. No, it's it's more artificial in that sense, as in everything that comes from that doesn't come. It isn't smart. It isn't like created and processed. It's more like we feed it content and go try to make something. The problem with that is that it can't create something original per se. It will try to mix and match things to make sense. So for instance, uh, ChatGPT is a good example. It will create text based on what is more often used on the internet, based on what it was fed. So it will create predictive content. It will create text that people imagined would happen. So while it does make things that make sense, it only makes sense it's because it's the most common thing spoken, you know? So that's what a lot of people don't realize. They think, oh, it's so smart. Look at it, what's creating. It isn't. It's just doing what is more common. You probably had some experience with some text or some uh, game that it just make you go, this is so predictable. Like, it's so bland. And that's what happens with programs like ChatGPT. It isn't creating something different. It's creating what is expected. Even if you give a different prompt, it will do that. It also has a very strong bias because its bias comes from everything that it was fed to it. And the internet, as you may know, has a very strong bias for some topics as well. So much so that this happened with different AIs in which they just went rogue in a sense that they just started saying some very abhorrent stuff. Which AI? Uh, there was Ty. That was the AI created by Microsoft. I think it was within a very small time frame, like a week or less than that, it just started going full on Nazi. Like, holy, how did we get here? <laughs> or another very interesting one, this is something I kind of like, there was the, have you heard of Seinfeld? It's a TV show. Yeah, and this guy created a project in which is basically a never-ending Seinfeld episode. Like, the show oh, just keeps going. Oh, I saw it. It's like a very low-poly, yeah. low-quality, Seinfeld, not-fun episode. Yes, and it's never-ending, and it uses uh, predictive tests like ChatGPT and stuff like that to create its content, which is smart, but it, it actually had to be taken down because it, it started to go full-on uh, anti-trends for a moment. Really? So the AI yeah. basically uh, anti-trends? Yeah, so they had to, Twitch took down the stream for, I think it was 24 hours, something like that, due to a ban because of it. Mm. So it's very... <laughs> so that's the thing. We should, it's very funny, actually, when you watch the episode, because the uh, Jerry Seinfeld uh, lookalike there just starts making these anti-trans jokes, and he often says, I don't know why no one is laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very self-aware in that sense. Did you see this game? I don't remember the name of the game, but uh, they are planning to, if an, if if they haven't already, started using ChatGPT for the NPC interactions. I don't know which game that is, but that's a thing that I think could be very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, it could create actually a lot of more dynamic and interesting content for some of the characters. Uh, what I think that will be the problem is that they will need someone to moderate that 24-7, basically. Because if, like I said, this is what happened with that show, and this isn't the only case in which uh, these chat AIs just started going to some very weird tangents since it pulls data from the internet and from the sample as well. So. Basically, you will need someone always watching to make sure the content is right. And if they try to limit it, it by going, okay, block these things. It will be weird when you start to talk with these characters because they will obviously have this very clear barrier stopping you from talking about cer certain topics. So it's not organic. It's not as good as tailoring uh, chat to make it something more interesting, like creating proper dialogue. For instance, I think it's borderline impossible 
for one of these AIs to create dialogue like it, you see on this collision. Because this collision touches upon some very abstract topics to talk about stuff. It's very different. The dialogue on it is very strong. So you wouldn't be able to do something with the same identity as that or close to it. It would look weird, to say the least. I, I'm not familiar with this game, Disco Legion. Disco Legion is honestly a work of art, and I highly recommend you play it. Okay, I'll, I'll take a look. But um, go going back to the ChatGPT moderator, I f I don't think companies will do that. I if a company decides to implement it in, in their games, they'll just have a disclaimer. They're just going to say, do you accept, they're going to ask at the beginning of the game, do you accept to play this game? Uh, keep in mind that uh, AI too is, is behind our NPCs, and that's it. That's the disclaimer. If you accept it, that's it. Uh, that's a very weak cover in general. Like, it's still your game. It's still mm. your responsibility. Even if you say, oh, it's not my responsibility, that's not true. <laughs> Like Tesla could say, oh, it's not my responsibility that the car did something dumb and hit someone because the driver should always be holding the wheel. Mm, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. You can't just say that. You still have an autopilot there. It should still have its own responsibility and safety nets. Yeah, but let's say That's you buy... I, I understand your point of view, but let's say you buy a smartphone. What do you do with the smartphone? It's your responsibility. If you go into the deep web and, and do some criminal shit, that's not Apple's or Samsung's responsibility. You know what I mean? Th that is true, but they are also not the providers of those websites. Like, it's very different for that. Even if you use those things, you still need to create certain safety nets for yourself as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's also in their interest to create them because having vulnerabilities like that in your cell phone of, of any sort, it's a threat to your other cell phones as well. Let's say mm -hmm. you go into the deep web and get a virus. It's not, sure, it was your mistake, but you're compromising the cell phone and that compromises also other cell phones and no company wants to be associated with a vulnerable cell phone, let's say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You also need have an interest to do that. You can't put a disclaimer, it's your own fault that you got screwed. Most people, like we spoke earlier about the video games, they won't see like that. They often will say, it was the cell phone who couldn't protect you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Have you been using ChatGPT a lot? A little bit, uh, just to see how it works. But in general, it's just, yeah. Uh, I have funny memories of similar tools in the past. Which ones? Uh, there was one, I can't remember the name right now, it just escaped me, but it was also something like that. It was just a predictive test that people would just write down and it would respond. It seemed like a normal conversation, even though it was clearly an AI, you know? Mm. So I can't remember the name now. I would play with it like in, I think it was 11, 12 years ago. Like to me, this isn't something super new. Sure, it's more advanced, but it's more of that, you know? Mm -hmm. What scares me? It's not the current state. It's not what we can do today with ChatGPT. It's it's definitely helpful, but and, and 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 cool in my opinion. But what's scary is what AI will look like in ten years from now, in fifteen years from now, in twenty years from now. How capable ChatGPT or the version of ChatGPT Chat that we're gonna have in, in 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 so many years from now? How much more capable this version will be? Like so today. Chat, chat GPT can basically answer you as a human, like, like if it was a human. It, kind, it tries, right? It tries to answer if, like if it was a human. In, in 10, 15 years from now, what else it will be able to, to do for you? It's going to be able to call someone for you and, and talk. It's going to be able to, I don't know, do your taxes for you. It's going to be able to, to do your job for you. Like, and, and so, I, yeah. That's a very complicated topic to go into because I'm not a specialist. No worries. Yeah. <laughs> Me neither. Uh, <laughs> but I, I have a bit of historical background to bring upon situations like these. Mm -hmm. uh, automation is something humans have done all life to improve things. Not to the scale we have right now. That's a very important uh, distinction, I would say. But historical precedent points out that it never truly really substitutes humans to a lot of things. When we automate something, what happens is that the demand for that usually increases because now it's more accessible. So usually what that happens is that we would need more people operating different tools to cover them. Like we say, for instance, ChatGPT, it's automated, sure, but we need people to analyze it to make sure it's talking you know, right, that it doesn't go into very problematic tangents, and we need to properly filter that, so we need more people covering that basis and learning how it works to properly uh, calibrate it for certain dialogues. That's an example. I'm not saying this will happen, uh, but the same thing will probably happen with art and other topics that are going right now. For instance, uh, we have these many creative uh, AIs creating different arts, 
but you can see very clear flaws when it comes to hands because hands are usually very complex. Like I said, it only follows logic to create things. And hands, if you look at it, it changes a lot. It has a lot of motion compared to arms and body. That's why it's very hard to create proper hands. That's one example. There's more reasons, of course. I don't know everything, but just to point out how it has a bias and how it's hard for it to follow certain things. Uh, so you would need an artist to properly you know, correct that. And also, it can't follow a proper art direction. It will usually do its own thing for the most part. It's also complicated when it comes to intellectual property. That is where a lot of this discussion becomes very interesting because you can't copyright any AI work. You just can't. What do you do then? Are you going to just use AI to create your artwork? Any company can now copy that and create their own content. You don't hold any right to it. So it's like someone can do something better than you and what you created, your idea, is now gone. It's someone else doing something better. Are you guys using Mid Journey at Puga? Mm, not that I'm aware of. Uh, I say not that I'm aware because I'm not in all projects, but now uh, I do know that some companies are using that usually to do what I mentioned previously, like kind of do a mood board, you know, mm -hmm. which is something I think it works really well. Uh, it helps you have these ideas of how you want things to go because you give it a prompt, it will create them. It's kind of more practical than just trying to research something on Google. Just giving a, an example, of course. Mm -hmm. So. I I think the future for this is very hard for us to predict. I'm not scared right now. I don't think my position, for instance, at risk. I don't think artist position at risk anytime soon either. Uh, I think only very amateurish companies will stick to it, to using only that, and they will face these difficulties I mentioned, like copyright and stuff like that. As soon as people find out it's it's AI, which they can do, because one of the flaws of AI, since it uses fed content, is more often than not, they will have kind of a hidden watermark mixed in, like a signature of an artist. Or uh, worst, a signature of Getty Images, since a lot of the content came from that, which is uh, an image bank. So much so that Getty Images is pro actually suing this one of these AIs because they very clearly stole their art to create their own their whole AI. You're talking about Carla and Greg? Carla Ortiz and Ge uh, Greg Rutovsky? I'm, sh I'm sure butchering their names, but... I don't know the names exactly. Yeah. I, I just know that one of the AIs the will they created Getty Images. Like Some of the art they created had a very clear watermark for Getty Images. Oh, okay, okay. So it's like, okay, they're using this content and they didn't pay to use Getty Images content to create this whole bank of images. So they're basically using everything there for free, which is basically stealing. <laughs> and Getty Images mm. is the one who goes, no, man, you can't use our stuff like that. You have to pay for it. But isn't that kind of artists do? They kind of go into the Get Images bank and, and screenshot whatever they want and, and do their thing? It's kind of different because that's more what AI does is more like tracing. And if you are familiar with the whole art world, I think you will see how people feel about tracers. It's not nice because basically you're not using skills. You're basically doing what a child often does of thinking over. And it's not mm. different for most of AI mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. since they only work with predictive content. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this isn't nice. It's not very creative. And that's what I said. AI doesn't escape these modes. They have to do what already exists. And sure, artists do that. They have their references, their inspirations, and they work on top of what was created before. That happens, but they can go above. They don't need to do on top of another work to create their own, mm -hmm. you know, like just trace. Yeah, I think that's a problem. It, it becomes a problem if you just use whatever the AI gives you. If you just takes whatever the, the AI sp like spits to you and uh, that's it, that I'm done. Then it, it's easily, it's easy to see that it's a low quality image because the AI cannot, uh, mid-journey, we're talking about mid-journey, cannot develop like a 4K image. You can see that it's full of errors, like the fingers, like you mentioned, and a lot of other problems. I, uh, but if you use AI as a like initial step or a refer reference uh, tool, it's amazing. You yeah. just take, you, you, it's the first step. You know, you take that and then you iterate and you, you make modifications and you do all the research and combine whatever the AI gave you uh, to create your final work, it's an it's an additional tool, and then I think if you approach it like that, it's an amazing tool. 
I agree. Like I think yeah. it fits a niche that is very helpful for a lot of people. That's why I'm not going, oh, damn, these AIs, they're still your jobs. <laughs> Got them machines. It's more like they're helping also small content creators who really can't afford artists mm -hmm. to give more life to their works. I work with a lot of mods. Like mm -hmm. I really like the modding scene for Paradox games. And mm, they use Paradox, a lot of imagery. Yeah. But they don't have artists. Like it's a whole niche of games that is not often you will have artists to cover all bases for VFX and other stuff like that. AI can help you give more life to this content, create more pictures that will make it seem more interesting instead of using just the generic the game provides to you. So it does help. It does fit a niche that will make things better for players in general and for modders. But it won't fully substitute an artist, at least not in the near future as well. Like if it comes to the day when artists will be replaced. The first thing that we need to be changed is how copyright is created. Watch full episodes of the Brewcast on the main YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Brewfrasca.